Hey there, it's meteorologist Jamie Singleton. Here's your daily wet weather map discussion. Daily WAP discussion? For uh, Monday, 420, 2020. I promise you, I've not been partaking in 420 tradition. Uh, recording at 941 p.m. And you can see that I just want to show you for the sake of showing you what's going on weather-wise and lightning-wise. Lightning was down a little bit earlier today, but it came back fast. It's off of WSV3. These storms you see out in the Atlantic Ocean were part of the storm system, or actually were the storm system, uh, that brought Virginia the rain earlier today. It was in and out of here, but brought a quick half inch of rain. If you looked at it on the radar around the Blacksburg and Roanoke area, it was bright red uh, because of the bright banding going on. Moisture was melting and falling initially as um, ice and snow the melting on the way down that's now way out to sea here i mean it's it's booking it this time yesterday you know we had severe weather uh sunday night in the parts of alabama around mobile some tornadoes and also around the uh, florida area today melbourne area down the straight line wind damage on the west palm beach this evening so that's that system we've got another cold front that's on the way up here across the great lakes and we are also seeing wind damage reports with this. Now, this is the time of year where this happens. Um, there's two branches of the jet stream, and this one's coming out of the northern branch. So the one that we had just a couple of days uh, up to today and yesterday for Sunday was a southern uh, stream. And we're going to reinvigorate the southern stream here, but get it closer to the mid-Atlantic uh, for the rest of the upcoming week. Um, but we do have this cold front up here across the Great Lakes. That is fairly dry, but it is giving us some precipitation in the form of some scattered showers and even a few thunderstorms uh, near Green Bay. Lots of hail reports here, lots of straight line wind, um, wind damage reports here. I don't know why I can't talk tonight. And then some more rain going in the Michigan. Uh, but this will be quickly, quickly moving uh, to the south and east, and it will bring with it a thin line of showers and storms that we really can't ignore tomorrow, but I'll show you uh, why I'm watching it carefully. The coverage won't be all that great as far as the aerial coverage. Um, we're not going to have a ton of moisture with this, but we are going to see the chance of something uh, that does pop up will have some, some shear to work with. That can't be ignored uh, any time of year, but especially, you know, in the spring. So this is the relative humidity in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere from 700 to 400 millibars. And this is the average through that layer, which is the top part of the troposphere. And you can see that we've got uh, northwest winds here keeping us very dry. There goes our storm system out in the Atlantic here in the Great Lakes. So this is our next front. You can see the, the bending of the height contours here showing us. I believe we've got the uh, sea level, yeah, sea level ice um, pressure down here. We've got the upper level winds on top of that. And the moisture's in green. And notice there's no connection to the Gulf of Mexico down here for tomorrow. So this system is having to generate its own moisture just from the dynamics. And that's enough for those showers and thunderstorms. Now, the SPC has the best chance of uh, severe storms to the north here across Pennsylvania and New York State um, in the New Jersey. But there's enough moisture for me to... Now, look at this in the form of maybe for Virginia, a passing shower or storm. Nothing that'll last all day. It'll be in and out in a hurry. It may jump over some locations. Not everyone's going to get wet south of the Mason-Dixon line. But the places that do could see a pretty robust amount of wind uh, that could cause some damage. I don't think it's going to be something the SPC will even include in their outlooks because the chance is so outside, but the chance is still there. Um, let me show you... Off of tropical tidbits, this is the GFS. There's not a lot of Cape tomorrow. In fact, on this bunch, let me look at the. What I saw summer. Not a lot there, but anyway, um, that's off the GFS. If you look at the Euro, the helicity off the three kilometer now. You can see that uh, from zero to thousand meters up, pretty moderate values here. So th there's some wind shear 
uh, with this front coming in. And you can make the front out through here, and you can see all those levels go way up across Pennsylvania, New York State, upstate. So this area, definitely in the northeast, will have to watch for severe weather, maybe even tornadoes uh, for the day on Tuesday. Can't rule out something strong uh, across West Virginia in the Old Dominion as well. Uh, but the moisture will be limited. But if you put on the cape here, a little bit cape that gets going. This is the new zero zero that's coming in. Far yet. Run. See as the day goes on, right as the front's crossing, the timing might be, might be just right. Um, cape, you don't need a lot of it um, to get at least some thunder. A cape 500 or below, 100 to 400 in Virginia. And it's actually not that high across the northeast either. Uh, but there's a little bit more dynamics up to the so your uh, sig tor parameters are actually non-zero which is notable it's not high but it's uh, notable in, in the eastern virginia and uh, out here across new jersey so you know i wouldn't be surprised if something pops up if something can pop up and it's not killed by the down sloping winds it could go severe i mean an active pattern and I want to show you that too. Let me just uh, look at the euro and show you the euro uh, 500 millibar height anomaly. It's not going to spend a ton of time on the other details other than just this map because this really just tells the whole story. Here comes a nor northern system. Look how uh, low it is compared to this. You know? um, so it's a, it's a strong northerly uh, branch of the jet stream coming down. And again, this, as I mentioned last week, is a big wind maker. A lot of substance here in the confluence of the northern branch and the southern branch that air is going to push down and it's going to bring some 50 knot winds down I think to the surface. Uh, we may have some high wind headlines by tomorrow morning across a good part of the mid-Atlantic especially uh, in Virginia and North Carolina and areas to the north in the Pennsylvania and Maryland and West Virginia too. Now by Thursday this almost comes out of nowhere. And the reason why it's doing that is because the pattern is going to a blocky one again. There's going to be a big area of high pressure developing here and here. And in between, the wavelengths get shortened. It's like if you take a belt and take both ends of it and push it together, it develops those waves on it. That's exactly what's happening in the mid and upper levels of the jet stream for the rest of this week and then the next week. So we have a strong storm system Thursday. And these have been further south the past couple of weeks, but this one's going to be further north. And the ones that follow are going to be further north. So we're going to have more energy over Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, the Carolinas, into the northeast, although it'll be mainly a cold rain there. But wherever the warm front and south sets up, we'll have to watch for some strong storms Thursday night. Then another system moves in. And waterlogged areas don't need a drop of rain across the south, but they'll get some showers at least with some of this. But again, the digging part of the energy is going to close a low off here by Saturday, according to the Euro, over the Ohio Valley. And that just drifts to the east into Sunday. I don't have showers in for Sunday, but I may have to include them if this low decides to cut off. An open wave would move faster. Um, but this has kind of a hybrid. And then you can see another sharpening of that lingering trough in the next week, which would keep it cool. And look at this guy. Uh, this is by the 29th of April. Comes diving down as this ridge just goes crazy out here. So the jet stream basically just amplifies. And that carves out. You've got to watch. I'll tell you what. Upper lows can give you everything from hail to flash flooding. What we had in 2018. We had a big old upper low. It stuck over us uh, for a good part of the late mid-spring, um, and you can also get tornadoes with this, thunderstorms, rain, and even uh, cold enough conditions brought down the, uh, bringing down the snow level. So we'll have to watch this for the 30th of April. <laughs> so if you, uh, if you animate this, you can get a bear, better picture. One, two, three, four, five. There's five uh, systems here in the a basic wave train here that keeps it parked. All the disturbed weather is still over the mid-Atlantic and parts of the south here, mainly getting cold frontal passages. But in between, we'll get the wind and we're going to get the, uh, the high pressure and cooler weather in between with this pattern. So let me talk about the wind. We're going to look at the low-level jet stream here off the, off the Euro. This is tonight. The winds start to increase on the ridge tops. And you're talking about uh, winds that'll be up around 
uh, we'll see in my, uh, 30 knots or so, 30, 34 knots. Pretty good wind. I think a lot of areas may decouple, which means that the um, lower uh, boundary layer will be calm and the areas on the ridges will be uh, windier, a little bit warmer. This is late tonight going in Tuesday morning. Look at the wind. You can draw the front right there. You've got a low-level jet out of the west, which compresses uh, off the mountains, brings the, again, a lot of subsidence there around this level and above. So it brings this 50-knot wind, or 45-knot wind, down to the ground. And with the mixing going on, because of the timing of this, it'll be as we approach afternoon, as we approach the lunchtime hour, see that it starts to just regenerate with the conditions basically out of the northwest like that. The mountains will enhance that wind potential. You can see it happening in the model there. Uh, so it may get windier in the mountains and highlands here in the Greenbrier Valley, Shenandoah Valley, as we go into Tuesday night. And as a result, a lot of your uh, temperatures that you see behind this front don't get that cold despite this being a northerly disturbance because the wind is going to keep the air mixed into uh, Tuesday night. And going into Wednesday, high pressure quickly builds in. But look at this. This is our Thursday system, and this is why I've got to watch that, too, uh, across the south once again. Uh, you've got 60 to 75 knot southerly winds at 5,000 feet, plowing right into a leftover uh, polar air mass up here to the north. So there's going to be a warm front here somewhere. And along that is where you're going to get potentially, potentially the uh, severe weather on Thursday. This is off the NAM going into Wednesday night into Thursday. I just want to show you the gradient here. Here comes the low coming into West Virginia around Charleston, Huntington. Uh, 48 degrees up around Winchester and 65, 63 in Danville. And the front right through, it uh, looks like Charlottesville, 64 area here, there, up to about. Delmar, Delmar. So we'll see. Um, definitely the potential is there for something. I do think tornadoes are potential in this pattern uh, coming up for Thursday. And again, everyone's commenting on how each storm system is bringing the same thing to the same areas, and that's what we call a pattern. I mean, that's what it does. It's, it's a reason that why that it's called a pattern. It repeats itself every couple of days. So that'll happen again, possibly on Saturday. But again, this is the Thursday system. Uh, coming up Thursday and a Thursday night. So here it goes on the weather prediction center. Go over it real quick here before we sign off for the night. Here comes our front. Again, it's going to be a windy day for Tuesday for a good part of the mid Atlantic. Showers and a couple of stronger storms can't be ruled out. And that, actually, the Weather Service offices uh, here in the east, looks like Moorhead City and Wakefield, do have thunderstorms, as Sterling does as well. And then by Tuesday evening, it's out of there, but still windy. And then finally, high pressure builds in early Wednesday. It's a bubble high. It doesn't last long. Behind it, here comes more severe weather from the Gulf all the way through the south and up to mid-Atlantic with some uh, overrunning rain at first on Thursday. And then as we go into Thursday night and the Friday, the actual low is going to bring with it, I think, the severe weather. So it may start as a general rain and as severe weather, except in the Gulf, uh, across the Gulf and, and south where it will probably start as bubble. Thursday. Then here we go again, Saturday. Another system here. A lot of energy. Your actual low is going to be across Kentucky, around Louisville, and got good rain here coming into the mid-Atlantic once again. So I do think flooding is going to increasingly be another concern, not just for the south this time, but uh, going into the mid-Atlantic with time as their adjustment of the energy is going a little bit farther north. So day three, this is from um, 8 a.m. Wednesday to 8 a.m. Thursday. We've got a moderate risk of uh, flash flooding and excessive rainfall. Red areas there through the Birmingham area. You've got a slight risk of uh, heavy rainfall, excessive rainfall through a good part of Texas and the south. And you've got the marginal area there in the green, which covers a lot of real. This area is hit so hard with some flash flooding, too, with our system on Sunday. Uh, we had some pretty decent rain in Virginia. We had up half an inch this morning. Some areas got up to around an inch. And uh, we've had some rain here as well. So we'll all have to watch that. Storm Prediction Center.
just tonight's or today's outlook, which goes through tonight. A few areas there along the front. Again, it's moisture that we're lacking. We're not lacking the frontal dynamics with this at all, or the wind shear. We just need a little moisture. So we may get that, uh, again, across the big cities here, Philly, New York City, Massachusetts here, and then maybe a storm that could go severe. Marginal doesn't mean no severe weather. It means that the uh, threat of an isolated tornado or severe weather is not as densely um, populated, effective with 25 miles of each point as the slight area. So again, the levels sometimes sound like intensity, but they're really more related to density of severe weather. All right, so that's it. Let me show you the, the UK map here. I wanted to squeeze that in real fast. This is where it sees the precipitation for tomorrow's front through 2 p.m. and then through 8 kind of drying up across the southern part, which we, we would expect that. But again, whatever does survive, it becomes severe. Here's your high pressure on Wednesday. And then look at Thursday here. Wednesday night, as a matter of fact, East Texas, uh, Beaumont and Louisiana going into Arkansas and Jackson, Mississippi. You've got the storms already firing according to the AMET. Then it's a fast moving system. So by Thursday afternoon, it's across Tennessee and Kentucky. Areas near the low will have to watch for wind shear and rotation. Areas across the south will too. And again, the, wherever that warm front is, that warm front can enhance spin. So across Virginia, maybe even into late Thursday night, as that warm front is lifting north, that may be the area to watch. Watch out Richmond too, I think. Then for Friday morning, low kind of takes its time as it may stack up underneath the upper level system. What that would do is give us more of a cool, mostly cloudy sky with some peaks of sunshine and some um, lingering showers. I think. Maybe some lingering just rain right near the coast into early Saturday then our, or early Friday. And then our Saturday system starts to evolve here, taking a very similar path. So uh, the model's not too uh, agreeing on not too much agreement on the Saturday, Sunday system. UK Met's about a day behind some of the European solution ensembles have it going through a little bit faster. But it wouldn't surprise me if it slows down if these lows don't start closing off more, looking a bit more amplified in the jet stream. So it's an active pattern that continues, relatively cool in between these uh, patterns, but flooding, severe weather, tornadoes all on the table starting tomorrow and then really ramping up again Thursday.